Today we're reviewing the Creality Falcon 2 Pro 40 watt laser engraver. Let's get into it. Just to give you some quick specs of this machine, it's got an engraving area of 400 millimeters by 415 millimeters. It has a laser dot size of 0.08 by 0.12 millimeters, and it weighs approximately 19 kilograms. So it's light enough for you to be able to pick it up and move it around relatively easy. Let's go over the unboxing and the setup. So it's well packaged and it comes partially assembled. All you need to do is install this kind of top enclosure section and this is just a case of bolting together some aluminium frame feeding in this uh, flexible plastic covering and then also fitting the hard rigid plastic covering on the sides all that's left after that is connecting the air assist installing and connecting the laser module installing the bottom drawer and the slatted bed and then lastly, just doing a little bit of cable management and plugging in the fan. And apart from that, you are good to go. This took me approximately 30 minutes to get up and running. Now I gave up trying to remove the protective plastic film on all of this plastic that you see here. I got the top sections removed, but some of the protective plastic covering actually goes underneath the pre-assembled part. So you'd need to disassemble it, remove the covering and then reassemble it. And it's a little bit of a faff to get all of this protective covering off. So I've kept, uh, I think about half of it on the uh, the plastic panels. The software setup is relatively easy. The Falcon 2 does not come with any proprietary software. So you're gonna have to use your own. The most common is probably gonna be Lightburn or Laser Gerbil. I use Lightburn for all of my laser engraver reviews and also these tests. Getting set up in Lightburn is actually very easy because they include a configuration file that you can just import into Lightburn and then that's pretty much all you need to do. Just make sure you select the right port and then you can start using the laser. Now the Falcon 2 comes with a built-in integrated camera in the top beam that runs across this enclosure here. Setting this up in Lightburn is relatively easy. It was my first time doing this type of calibration before, but basically it involves uh, moving around this uh, calibration sheet, taking pictures of it in its nine different locations on the bed. And then you go through the second stage, which uh, involves engraving a calibration mark on a piece of paper or a piece of wood. And then you take an image of that within Lightburn and you just line up the crosshair to make sure that it's got the correct calibration. The big caveat to getting this working properly with these fixed bed style of machines like the Falcon Pro 2 is that every time you change the material thickness you are changing the distance between the material surface with the fixed camera. So what you will need to do is do the camera alignment process for each material thickness that you use and then you want to save the alignment profiles for the different Z heights and then load these when you switch the material. If you do this then you will get spot on accuracy with the camera and the alignment. If you just do the one calibration like what I did initially I just use a piece of paper and then when it comes to engraving and, and cutting out like six millimeter plywood, for instance, it was off by about half a millimeter or maybe one millimeter. It is important, especially if you're going to be doing fine details or you know on small objects, for instance, where the where the accuracy is really, really crucial. It does take a little bit of time. It is a little bit annoying that you have to obviously make the profiles for each material thickness, but once you've got them done and you've got them saved, then it's not gonna to be too much of a hassle to just switch between them as you change your material. This is my first time reviewing a machine with a built-in integrated webcam, and it is a really, really nice touch. It does make marking out and framing and those type of things much, much more easy, and it just gives you that confidence that you know, whereabouts you're placing things, it is actually gonna be engraving there. The retractable hood is a little bit noisy, but you can kind of see it working there. It does a good job of protecting you from the laser reflections and also containing the fumes from the laser engraving process. This top section is a flexible plastic. I was a little bit surprised of that when I did set this up. I thought that this was all gonna be like hard, rigid plastic. But yeah, these top sections are obviously flexible because this has got to come backwards and forwards to open the enclosure. But the side panels are rigid plastic and you've got your fan mounted here on the side as well. It might not be the most robust option, obviously, you don't want to kind of rest anything on this top section but this is a million times better than any type of open frame design as i said the only downside is if like me you kind of move this around and maybe you you know you put it into storage when you're not using it you obviously got to be very careful of like dropping anything on this uh it would easily go right through it and yeah you're gonna have to take it apart and feed in these sheets again because they're quite easy to slip out so i wanted to test the effectiveness of the enclosure so i set up my air quality monitor and i got two different type of results that i'm going to talk in a little bit more detail about so when the machine was connected to my standard inline extraction fan paired with my fume extraction unit, I didn't detect any increase in particulate levels or VOCs in the room while I was doing my laser engraving. However, when using the standard setup, which is just using the Falcon 2 Pro fan at the side here and hooking it up to the hosing that comes with it and then venting it out of the window, 
After literally 30 seconds to a minute, I could start to smell the, the smell of burning wood from the engraving. And the air quality monitor confirmed this by showing a considerable spike in the particulate values in the room. Now, this isn't too surprising. After all, we are comparing a kind of small integrated fan with a you know full-on kind of fume extraction setup that I use kind of day to day when I'm doing laser engraving. But I think it does highlight one key point that you know, even with an enclosure, you do still need to think about proper fume extraction and preferably filtration as well when you are doing laser engraving. And you should probably think about investing in a good extraction fan, even if you are using this laser engraver. So I went a little bit deeper in the testing of this fume extraction setup. I tested the airspeed of the integrated fan that you get with the Falcon 2, and we got a approximately about 12 meters per second of airspeed at the fan inlet. When you add the hose that comes with the Falcon 2, that adds resistance to the airflow and it drops the airspeed down to six meters per second. As I mentioned on a previous video on laser fume extraction fans, airspeed isn't the whole story. You also need to consider the fan's ability to overcome the resistance and that's what static pressure measures. So let's take a look at the static pressure that the Falcon 2 inbuilt fan can achieve. We only measure 2.5 of water content displacement on my DIY manometer here. Compare that to my more powerful fan that I use day to day for laser fume extraction. And to try and keep things even, I've set the fan to its medium speed setting because it is much more powerful. But at the medium setting, we was able to get 11 meters per second. So it's around about the same in terms of the airspeed that it can generate. However, it achieved 4.7 centimeters of water column displacement on the manometer, meaning it can push the air through the filtration and the ducting with greater efficiency. And that higher pressure also helps to maintain the negative pressure within the enclosure, which reduces the likelihood of fumes escaping through the leaks and the small gaps in the enclosure. So that's what I think is going on. And I think that explains why I was able to detect particulates in the room with the integrated fan and why I didn't detect any when I've got obviously the more powerful setup. On the machine enclosure itself, you have a home button, emergency stop, stop start button, motor jog controls. And for some reason there was quite a delay between pressing the jog buttons and the gantry actually moving. And it's also not the smoothest movement this can probably be tweaked in the firmware because the gantry moves fine when you are engraving and just using it normally. So overall, with the right setup, the enclosure does a good job of keeping in the laser reflections and also the fumes. And also I like the fact that you have 360 degree view around the machine. So wherever you're working in a room, you can always take a look at it and take a look at the work, which is really nice because like me, I have this going on and then I'm always you know, doing something else because I'm not just kind of standing there staring at this thing engraving. There are also good safety features. It has a magnetic kill switch uh, at the front of the enclosure so when you open up the enclosure it will actually turn off the laser engraver it's also got flame detection on the laser module itself now trust me this magnetic kill switch is a very good feature to have i would advise not overriding it even though you may be tempted to because it is a little bit of a faff when it comes to framing but from using open frame machines uh, there has been one instance when i did accidentally fire the laser and i caught a little bit of a flash in my eye and it is the reason why i went out and bought some very expensive certified laser safety glasses because that was too close for comfort for me. Yeah, I'd definitely recommend keeping the kill switch on. It's a very, very good safety feature. Now, if you don't own a laser engraver yet, then you don't need to worry about those sort of safety things, but that shouldn't stop you from being able to make things from a laser engraver. Now, did you know that you can cut steel plate with a laser? Well, by using PCB way, you have access to that type of higher powered machinery. There's also a huge range of CNC machining services, 3D printing and injection molding services available. On top of all that, they have a massive range of PCB services ranging from PCB etching, PCB assembly, all the way to full turnkey and OEM solutions across most of their services. They offer low quantity order and very fast shipping. So head over to PCBWay.com today and see what they have on offer. So during my review, I did like the overall user friendliness of the enclosure and the way that they've got it laid out. I really do like the way that everything is kind of just laid out at the front. You've got access to jog, framing, stop and start. You can turn on and off the fan. You can turn the light on and off and also you can control the amount of air assist that you've got with a little dial as well. So it's definitely been well thought of. And also the pull-out tray. I did really like this because with every other laser engraver that I've used, it's a case of kind of like lifting out a honeycomb bed, or if you've got slats, then it's going to be a pain in the ass because you've got to take off all of the slats individually. I really like the fact that you can just pull out the drawer, you can get a vacuum, clear up all the debris, and then push it back in. It's much, much quicker to deal with kind of cleaning up the machine. And believe me, after a few jobs, you will have quite a lot 
lot of debris and bits of you know paper and wood at the bottom here that are going to be a fire hazard so you, you do want to clean it up as much as possible now i'm not going to talk too much about what the 40 watt laser can do because there are so many videos out there showing you what a 40 watt laser can do and they are all pretty much the same i think 40 watt as i said previously on other 40 watt laser engraver reviews to me it feels like uh, you are kind of getting to the point where it feels like it's for obviously you know typical laser engraving tasks which is you know maybe more ornamental or maybe more craft based but 40 watt feels like it could also be used for kind of functional prototypes as well i mean this can you know easily cut through nine millimeter to 12 millimeter plywood with not too much uh, charring so to me i use laser engravers more for the functional side of things of cutting out jigs and prototypes and in the past when using like 10 and 20 watts you're really limited to like three to six millimeter at a push it's going to take a very long time to cut through but 40 watts you can you know you can cut through thicker materials quickly and obviously you can cut through thinner materials much quicker you can also make quite a mark on metal as well uh, you'll be quite surprised by how deep you can actually engrave in metal and obviously you can do color engraving but you have to really get your settings right with this type of diode laser ideally you really want to be looking at a like a mopar fiber laser if you if you want to do kind of engraving and cutting on metal or if you want to do colored engraving on metal as well let's talk about the photo engraving capabilities so the dot size is advertised as 0.8 by 0.12 and i mean creality are not the only company that do this but they usually give you that number in the perfect conditions with perfect focus in real world you're likely not going to be able to get the perfect fo focus to get the dot size that small and for focusing with this machine uh, there are two knobs on the module and you just use a wedge you put it on your workpiece you then drop the module down onto the wedge according to the, the thickness range and then you tighten the bolts now the issue that i've always had with these type of setups is that when you tighten the bolts you do detect a, just a little bit of movement in the module which is just going to throw off the focus just a little bit and i feel like those little tiny movements are probably going to be enough again to to throw off that perfect focus so you, you're just not going to get that dot size in realistic settings now there are two settings for the laser module you have the uh, the full power which is the 40 watt and then you've also got it in the precise mode and i believe that drops it down to 20 2 watts or 20 watts and you do get finer engraving details i tested the uh, the dot size by using the interval test in lightburn and basically what it does is it just engraves lines at different distances uh, and then by using my microscope i can take a look and see whereabouts the gap between the line disappears and that kind of gives you an idea of the the line thickness now the precise mode is definitely much more of a precise dot um, but even in the precise mode i I was only able to get about 0.22 to 0.24 interval size before it started to overlap we are quite a way off from the advertised dot size and because that 0.2 millimeter dot size that i measured it does mean that this laser module is not ideal for photo engraving because of such a large dot size it's quite difficult to render fine details when you are doing the engraving. And I think Creality knew this, and that is why they include a 1.6 watt module that is used for finer engraving. This is kind of one step forward, two steps back, in that it's great that they're giving you a module specifically for finer engraving, but it's 1.6 watts. It's gonna take forever to engrave. And also, who wants to be swapping around the laser module between jobs? I certainly do not want to be doing that. And then what I always find is that with, you know, photo engraving jobs, I would do the engraving first of all, and then I would do maybe like, you know, I'll cut out some elements or maybe I'll cut out the entire thing. And to do that, you have then got to pause the job. You've got to switch out the module. You've got to refocus it. You've got to hope that, you, you know, you don't move it. I didn't really like that. I didn't bother testing 1.6 watt because it is, you know, is that, that is just too weak. If it was maybe a a 10 watt module that was uh, for finer details, then maybe that would probably be worth it. But 1.6 is it feels like we're going back to the dark ages with a laser engraver so that's not to say that you can't do photo engraving with the 40 watt and especially in the precise mode you can do photo engravings but they are not going to be super detailed you're not going to be able to render kind of like fine graduations of tone you know that you'd see in maybe a, a photo for engraving speeds we topped out at around about 100 millimeters per second uh, once you start going over this speed you start to introduce more of an overshoot of the laser module for the acceleration and deceleration to get to those speeds and you find that once you go above 100 millimeters per second engraving speed the time to complete the jobs actually takes longer because the laser module has got an overshoot 
in order to, to decelerate. It then needs enough time to accelerate back up to that engraving speed, obviously move across the, the material and engrave, and then slow down again. And you'll actually see it when you do a material test and you go up in the speeds, you'll actually see the laser module, first of all, kind of going like this, you know, engraving a line, and then it will start to get bigger and bigger and bigger because the motors, they cannot handle those higher accelerations. You can engrave at higher speeds, but it's just gonna take a little bit longer, which is a little bit annoying because you'd obviously think that higher engraving speed is gonna result in a, in a quicker job. With framing, it does become a little bit tiresome, and I have seen other people overriding the magnetic kill switch, but for me personally, I would just get used to doing it this way. There's not much Creality can do when they've got this safety feature, which I feel is definitely more important than being able to frame a little bit quicker. It is a case of lifting up the enclosure, you then move the piece, you then close it, you then frame it, and then you might have to lift it up again, you know, move the part to get it into the perfect position. Obviously there's ways that you can get around having to frame, you know, you can set up jigs and things like that to make sure that you've always got the right placement, which is really what you should be doing for batch jobs. But yeah, I would not override the magnetic kill switch personally. With the motion system, one thing that I observed is the design choice of the, the gantry beam in the Falcon 2 Pro. So instead of using like linear rails or polished steel rods, the entire gantry beam is a single piece of extruded aluminium with raised semicircular rails extruded into the top and bottom surfaces. And these features serve as the rail for the plastic V wheels that are on the laser module. The problem is, is that the entire beam is anodized. So that doesn't create the most smoothest surface for a V wheel that has to move along it. And also I've noticed that debris gets caught onto that top rail beam. And as the wheels go over it, um, it, it just kind of like presses it into the anodized surface. And these gradually create like small imperfections or bumps as the wheels move along it. And I can I can literally feel it as I move the laser module backwards and forwards, and I can see the bits of debris, I can actually feel it kind of bumping and, and raising over it. So yeah, this does not create the perfect conditions for a smooth motion system. And while doing the interval test, I did notice that the lines had slight fluctuations in the straightness of them. And I think this could be what is causing it because I used this for about a week and that debris obviously built up over that time. Now we're talking about fluctuations under a microscope. In real world conditions, I did not notice anything. It's only when I put the uh, the material underneath the microscope. I don't think it's too much of an issue. I don't think you're gonna notice it when you're doing cutting or engraving, but I think it does just highlight the fact that you should definitely try and keep that top rail as clean as possible because you don't want more and more gunk getting pressed into the anodized surface. So this model comes with an air assist and it is a standard air assist setup, but it works really, really well and you definitely want to use it. Air assist is definitely a necessary feature if you are doing laser engraving, especially when it comes to cutting out things. Here is just a quick test to show you the difference between air assist on and air assist off. And you can see the difference in a charring on the top surface when I'm cutting out this circle. So I think that covers pretty much everything that I've come across during during this review. Hopefully you have found it useful. I definitely think that the safety features, I think that the enclosure itself, the integrated camera are definitely big pros to this engraver and especially in this price range. There's not many that have integrated cameras. The build quality is nice, the documentation is good and you're obviously buying from Creality which you know, are quite a trusted supplier in this space. They've been going for quite a few years. Obviously you know, kind of they're, they're big with 3D printers but they're also venturing into laser engravers as well. I think there's definitely room for improvement in their next iteration of the Falcon series. I'd probably like to see kind of a better gantry rail system being used. Maybe a linear rail would be nice. And I think slightly better accelerations would really help with the engraving speeds. And maybe a better option for when you need to do fine engraving. But anyway, that is it for today. Thank you for watching the view. Hopefully you found it useful. Please put any questions below. I try and do my best to answer them for you. But that is it. I'll catch you later.